Hello and welcome back. We are continuing here our fascistista, that is Victoria herself, uh, Vic, uh, UK run in Victoria 3. Uh, we're on the patch 1.2 uh, open beta, and so, or, or sorry, 1.5.2 open beta, and so there's a bugginess abound, and our goal is to go full fascist, and then also thumb everyone's pie. Last episode, um, a great tragedy happened, and that was Eric Karl Marx perished he died and so our dreams of having freud and uh you know Karl marx and victoria all together in one big happy family those were cast asunder now i do believe that the event might have been bugged for us to spawn freud because we should have spawned freud before marx died so i'll chalk that up as a pseudo win but marx is dead now unfortunately also we defunded the police so there's no more police uh which is going to increase the chance of fascist spawning and we tried to spawn a bunch of fascists I have since learned in the interim, uh, you know, that it is not, uh, it is not the, the, <laughs> it's not the thing that gives you the fascist party that allows you to spawn fascists, it's not the tech that gives you the fascist party, it's mass propaganda. And so, we were researching useful techs, uh, you know, for just a slight bit, because we first rushed political agitation, we didn't research water to boiler, we got it in 19, or 1860, uh, you know, the tech you would research first is the UK, and then we researched some useful texts, but then we're like, oh, you know, we gotta do analytical philosophy in order to unlock Freud, and so then we did that, didn't research useful texts, and now we would be researching useful tech, except we need to get our fascistista on, so for the next eight years, we're gonna be stuck in going mass propaganda, of course, naturally, as it were. We are currently trying to pass ethnostate, and we have a bit of a cursed government here where uh, the petite bourgeoisie, not fascist, and the intelligentsia is fascist. The petite bourgeoisie actually want to join up, shack up with the trade unionists uh, and join the labor party. And, uh, you know, the armed forces want to join together with the fascist party, which of course is normal, but we do have the, you know, intelligentsia of fascist kind of bearing on down. We could make a much more legitimate government that would still be able to tick fascism because ethno-nationalist here on the rural folk, but we're going to stick in uh, and maintain here uh, because we have, you know, this 10% ticking, or sorry, 20, 23% ticking on fascism from both the intelligentsia and the petite bourgeoisie. Sorry, not fascism, ethno-nationalism uh, or ethno-state, which we are currently trying to pass and we will watch this with great interest for our fascist run. Man, it feels like the trade unions have just been getting unlimited positive events here after the death of Marx, and so they are looking really, really good as far as oh no wait, that's the that's the industrialists that are looking good as far as votes go. Nah, 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 nah. But they are getting projected 20% of the votes, which is still a decent amount. We also have the British Union of Fascists, which of course does not uh, you know, include what is traditionally the more fascist looking interest group. But so it goes. So we get a pretty big war declared by France, and um, they want Sierra Leone. We could have, in theory, just kind of given this up. They also want to humiliate Great Britain. We don't want any of that, and we definitely don't want to pay war reps again for, like, forever. And so uh, we will be trying to win this war. It might be a little bit buggy, though, here on the Africa front. So if we completely lose these fronts and get occupied, uh, we will be unable to land. And we know this because this is the particular way in which it is uh, big and bugged out. And so uh, we will also try and land them in a few spots if we can uh, to try and deny them in a similar way. Uh, hopefully this works uh, and we don't get bugged out kind of like we did in the last one when they enforced on us. So hopefully the shoe's on the other foot and not on the same foot here. Uh, overall, we put in enough to kneecap them out from being a subject of concern for the rest of the run. If we liberate Britney and Occitania, they should be properly cooked and their pie should be well done. Tragedy abound. Victoria herself has also now perished, and so we are left with Henry, King of Hanover, instead of our dear Victoria, which of course is going to run us a huge malice on, uh, or a huge... We were getting so, so much from her popularity in terms of base authority, which is one of the reasons why the petite bourgeoisie bonus is even, like, better than it looks, uh, but we will take off some violent suppressions and, uh, encourage greener grass campaigns in Sinai, uh, the violent suppression in Hey Bay, we'll put an end to that. Now that, now that Victoria's gone, we can finally lift the violent suppression we were putting on the Han people, uh, as uh, was her uh, uh, her desire, and we will also uh, not worry about, you know, getting this done in Sinai, and uh, that will be how we rake back our authority, but now the dream is well and truly dead. We will not have Freud, we will not have Marx, and we will not have Victoria. Tragedy.
Well, at the very least, we do natural spread a decent tech here. That gives us plus on companies. Also, this war is not looking too hot. We're just trying to hold off. They can't enforce us below zero uh, unless we unless they get Sanbas. We are sending a whole bunch of troops to Sanbas. We have a whole bunch of troops in the capital. Really don't think there's a way for them to enforce us below zero here. So we're expecting a white piece, you know, in the, like six years from now. Um, now, we do have another company. And let's take a look at currently what we have going on. I think we have a pretty good setup, you know, where we're getting the steel for the state construction efficiency then we're getting you know the iron the coal and we would love to have you know lead and uh we would love to have both lead and sulfur if possible but i don't think there's a lead sulfur company uh if i recall correctly there is you know this generic company here this generic company here but you know what's a little bit tempting is the british foods because we are going ethno state right and so we're about to encounter some problems and we don't we also don't have a spectacular um you know uh British munitions is tempting for the army defense, at least for right now, actually. Uh, but I think we're going to go with the Great Western Railway, which is our railway company. Minus radicals from standard living decreases uh, is going to be kind of okay. The prestige, nah. But the main one is we will get, uh, you know, throughput on all of our railroads, which will be pretty... Actually, you know, we already have the Kaiping Mining Company, don't we? This is kind of gratuitous. Mm. This is a shame. So, I guess in that case, uh, maybe we go with... Uh, I mean, the oil company would not be terrible. We have a sufficiently small GDP. Let's go with this company for now. Um, this company will kind of fall by the wayside, uh, you know, as the value of minting decreases. Uh, but when you're kind of close to 200 million, I actually think this is a decent shout. And this will give us more money with which to do things, uh, you know, in the, in the short term, at least. We did it. We got the ethno state. It's a shame the fascistista was not here to see it herself. But we have finally done it. We have become what we should have been all along. An ethnostate. Uh, so now we will probably want to, you know, man, it's a shame that, like, we, there's not a really good way to put the trade unionists in Gov. I suppose, oop, that's not them. These guys want, uh, the petite bourgeoisie wants to be with them. And so this is what we get if we try and link these guys up. And we need to link these guys up because the nihilist supports this. And so we might... Uh, you know, have a little perusal about the laws we would kind of want to pass right now, but I'm thinking that, you know, without Victoria, do we even really truly need a monarchy? We'll have a little bit of a reflection as to what we need without her. Without the fascistista, perhaps it is, it is best left to something else. Oh, look at that sweet, sweet authority as we finally made uh, the petite bourgeoisie happy and unlocked their first bonus, which, again, is the absurd Great British, uh, you know, 50% authority. And on top of that, we just passed Ethnostate, really expecting to see a very strong crank up, you know, in regards to what is it, their, their clout, because... I mean, it should be high, should it not? Uh, it should be jumping up a lot, and it's not jumping up as much as we had hoped, but soon it will be the case that only they can be wealthy, uh, or, sorry, only, like, British can be wealthy. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to give them a little bit of a bolster and try and double in their bonus here for plus 100% authority, uh, which would be quite, quite strong, um, and they are going to be quite, quite happy with what we're doing, except for this guy. This guy, because he's a loyalist, we could exile the dissident, but we, I think we do want to maintain a slot available for uh, exiling one of these guys so we're gonna not do that um, we might even want to promote one of those guys to government to be honest um, I mean we can promote him to the trade unions the jingoist Nah, we'll just leave it be for now uh, but uh, we are going to be going uh, parliamentary Republic after the death of Victoria uh, it is it's too much to bear Henry sniveling uh, we will go with Victoria instead. Or, sorry. Well, not Victoria. It's not that type of run. It's not a necrocratic run. We're going parliamentary. In a great twist of irony, France only wants the very one thing that they have that they can't enforce on, which is transferring sambas. So they don't want they don't want Sierra Leone. They don't want war reparations. They don't want the treaty port. They just want transfer sambas. We're not going to give it to them because, you know, we bite our thumb at them. But, uh, you know, we're not, like... I don't think we're that close to winning this war, uh, but we have a plan, and the plan is Chinese people. And what do you mean Chinese people? Well, we are recruiting up in here, a barracks up to level 100, and while everything is like pretty buggy, or, or level 50 here and level 50 here, also nice to get a decent tech from that spread. Uh, you know, once we have these level 50 barracks, our British Chinese army, of course, uh, which is stationed in England, uh, will be free to defend quite vigorously. And then I think with the British army here, the 11th British army, we might do a little bit of a landing on uh, Normandy, as it were. 
Uh, they're currently uh, defending the Algiers uh, Senegal front, so they're defending down here, uh, but we'll put them in. Uh, also, we have to free up our navy once this naval landing either succeeds or fails, uh, and it's looking like fails, uh, we will free up our 100 stack navy, so maybe we can try and land. Uh, if, they're, if they have all of their troops out and about, we might be able to catch them unawares and enforce on them. Queen Victoria is not even cold in the ground, and already the vultures are circling. Germany is declaring a play against this. However, somehow we are going to be on the same side as the French Empire in this play as well. That's an interesting bit, because I don't think I've ever seen that, uh, you know, occur where you could have be on both sides of two different wars at the same time. Um, but obviously this is as a result of their unification attempt, uh, which they're being a little bit naughty. And we are the war leader here, uh, as we should be, uh, you know, with the great fascist, I mean, great, great Britain. And so, uh, you know, we will be asking for our states back, my guys. Uh, and also we will hopefully be getting these back. I very much doubt that they ever back down after putting this in. And I think we have zero infamy. So we'll just ask for them all back. Would you kindly return what is proper, you know, British German land uh, and not German German land? It is British German land. We would like it back, my guys. And so hopefully we will be able to get this back from them. We do see uh, that we have plenty of maneuvers in order to maybe sway a couple people. Of course, uh, you know, we probably want to tie up or wrap up in some way our war with the French Empire, but not like this. Although the war reps would not be terrible. Transfer Sambas, conquer Sierra Leone, all this. It's a bit too much. Um, and we do hit our tech, so now we just have six years until we can get mass propaganda. Hallelujah. We can keep the masses in their place after that. Okay, we just had the game completely crash just as soon as this uh, war started, and I anticipate that exact thing will happen again. But we're just gonna, you know, kind of see what happens if we just uh, let that go through again. Because, yeah, because the game cannot process the fact that we have uh, fronts, uh, you know, in... <laughs> we have fronts... We are both on one side of the war against France and another side of the war with France on our side. So we're going to have to do something. All right, so we are going to give up Sierra Leone uh, just to make sure that the game goes through. We could switch sides and have France like capitulate or white peace with us, which would be kind of more appropriate because they're not enforcing on us. We're not really enforcing on them. I think eventually we would, uh, and we wouldn't. We don't need to declare wars because this is pie thumbing only. Uh, but instead, we're just going to give them up. Uh, you know, we could give them up. Uh, we'll just give them the humiliation. We can't join plays against them for five years. Not too big a deal. And hopefully, uh, this allows you know this uh, Germany war to go off without causing a bug. Oh. Well, that works too, I suppose. Okay. Alright, so take one get last look into the deep eyes of our, you know, GDP graphs, because these are about to disappear. We are going to make one last kind of effort. Almost 100 million pops, so that's kind of cool. Uh, with the, uh, you know, eugenics surprise that is the great british fascist experiment uh but uh we are going to be swapping to the french and we are going to be taking the bag from them uh this is because um well actually no we won't because we don't want the Bur we want burgundy to be involved so we're gonna like white peace which would have been how like the i i think white peace is eventually the resolution anyways and so we'll propose this peace deal we will swap back to the other side magic and we will white peace and see if this also crashes the game we will say, hey, we accept this peace deal. And hey, we get a peace treaty. That does appear to work. And so, let's see if this war actually pops off. We will want to move these guys to a reasonable looking front. Uh, we'll move them over here. Uh, actually, not... We won't help the French. We want to help ourselves. We'll move them over here. A reasonable looking front. And it does look like this war can pop off. So we can continue on this run until we get fascism. It didn't die with Victoria. Not yet, at least. Oopsie, we did a poopsie and are occupying pretty much all of Germany here. Showing them really, truly, showing Germany what the power of fascism is all about. Hopefully that will never haunt us, you know, in 80 years or so. Well, give or take, 70, 70, 80. Uh, but we're showing them the true power of fascism right now as we just give them a, a stern clobbering here. It's turtles all the way down with this army that is uh, obviously clearly bugged out, all these armies. Uh, but they, they can't fight us. They're going to be capitulating pretty soon. And they will be returning the righteous German-British soil uh, to us uh, as they should. And be cut down to size. 
And now, they're about to get enforced on. It should just be one more tick. We have a couple native uprisings, plus, uh, you know, some position we inserted ourselves into. But we are returning, rightfully, Hanover, Elbe, Westphalia, and Brunswick uh, to the British fold, uh, as it should be, as the car goes. That is a loud, loud car. That is a very loud car. Uh, but, as you can see, we have uh, rightfully reclaimed all of this uh, British dirt, uh, as it were. You know, there's certainly a lot of British here well you know enough british here mostly north germans though that's actually we need to we need to bring some people in from elsewhere so they can become uh so they can become english and not be discriminated against with our you know eth ethno state laws uh that we are currently uh going for uh we do we are getting rid of the market monarchy for parliamentary republic and we have gotten decent enough roles that we could actually since we have a 39 percent ch pass chance we could actually you know just slot in something much more legitimate and just kind of go from here but i think it's fine that we keep our less than legitimate government very suspicious uh and continue our way towards parliamentary republic uh from there you know we just have a little four years left until mass propaganda and we could actually research useful tech after that you know, nearly halfway, three quarters of the way through the game, or two thirds, something. So we finally, natural spread, open hearth process, so we can both, you know, turn on the PM, but also we had been holding off, there was a really good company that we wanted to use, or maybe not, uh, at least a little bit better than our version of this. So we'll establish the Carnegie Steel Company now, which is better than Baklo, Vaughn, and Co. Uh, but we might just keep them both in because now we're going to be getting a whole, whole bunch of, you know, throughput and output on our steel, uh, iron, and coal. And this might even be enough to overcome it. I'm very curious, though, uh, how big the penalty is for having three coal companies because I don't think we've had three before. And so we see that 36% uh, uh, throughput bonus, it's only... So we get... 0.5 for the second marginal company and we only get 0.3 for the third marginal company but that's a lot of throughput baby that is that is a lot of throughput baby uh I, are we even using the edict here i think that's where our uh you know resource edict is encourage manufacturing this is encourage resources and so yeah we do have 116 uh, throughput on this right now uh, but it's probably not worth running both of these companies and uh, if we're just going to run one we'd much rather run Carnegie Steel uh, so I guess we might disband this Baklal Vaughn and Co which is the British one and put in instead um, the the down here the British Gold Company and this will be a little bit better railway building through but in particular seems like an extraordinarily strong modifier Okay, so we've rolled another event, the Booming Industries event, and now we have Encourage the Resource Industries, Mining Production, which I think is the Booming Industries event, uh, the Coal Field, the 10% here, and then 30% from the competing companies. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, yeah, we only have two competing companies, and then Economies of Scale, plus 50 for 130% throughput. Now, if we swapped in the company... Instead of the British Gold one, and we swap in Bachlin, Vaughn, and Co., we should go up to, like, 136, right? Which I think of this is the most throughput I've ever seen at any point in time. 136% throughput, which just goes to so. The fascists really know how to manage an economy here. The PB pip being powerful, and we now have nearly 2,000 authority here. Uh, you know, we're bolstering, we're, we're making moves, we're doing all kinds of stuff. And so this feels quite, quite strong. You know, uh, I think that the meta is, again, going to be not trying to get these guys powerful intentionally. Because uh, we've kind of going really far out of our way to do this. Uh, but this is an insane amount of authority. And so we're going to put in more consumption taxes and actually, like, ramp up construction a little bit here. Uh, which we hadn't really been doing. I mean, to be fair, our big problem now is labor. Or this is kind of the problem we are facing. Uh, where we have, you know, we still have 5 million, pe I guess we still have, like, 5 million peasants that we can de-peasant. But they're almost all in China and it will cost a lot of convoys to, uh, you know, do a lot of industrial kind of things here. But I guess we will because it is incorporated and um, we can tax them just fine. While there is a bit of turmoil, um, you know, this should be fine. There's a lot of turmoil, unfortunately, from discrimination. With shocker, uh, the Han Chinese pipe people do not like the, you know, uh, what is it, the ethnostate rulership of uh, the UK. And I'm not sure, you know... <sighs> 
It's just discrimination is just not good uh, because the, the turmoil is not going down and it's not going to go down because we don't accept these pops. And so, I mean, and we also don't have police. Very importantly, we don't have police. If we had police, we could do something, but we're off the police so that it makes it easier for us to roll fascist. So what's this? The black shirts in the home counties? Ethno-nationalist uh, paramilitaries organized by the British Union of Fascists are using violence and coercion to intimidate loyal voters loyal to rival parties. Well, I think, I think we will be a nation of tolerance and tolerate this behavior, of course, naturally. Uh, let's take a look at how the election is brewing up, though. And we do see the fascist union is getting a big chunk of the vote, along with the P-Lead party, uh, in terms of how things go now. And so, uh, with this current government we have, we can just, you know, reduce this one more notch. And we are righteous, of course, as is our position. Uh, and we will be, you know, kind of trending towards ethno-nationalism here. Um, you know... Things are coming up quite nice. Kind of got to figure out a way to make these guys happy again because we lost their happy bonus, uh, which is very much the entire point of all this. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe lowering taxes will help. We could, of course, raise these up quite a bit if we wanted, uh, which would also give us a higher percentage authority as well, but uh, that's not going to cut it for this. Uh, fortunately, we're also getting a ton of migration attraction, which is really great considering we don't accept any migrants. But, um, uh, you know, we will, we'll of course, tolerate the black shirt behavior. And we finally, the turmoil is over after the death of Victoria. We couldn't find a worthy person to rule. And so we decided to enable a parliament. And so now we can fiddle around and pass kind of any law we want much, much, much easier because it is much easier for us to shuffle around, you know, uh, people in and out of government for these types of things. Uh, the trade unions big love us. Um, and we will be evaluating kind of what laws we want to pass uh, as we move forward. Of course, can't add police because that's going to make it harder once we finally research mass propaganda to roll a fascist. It's going to help a lot that we are not on that. Um, but, you know, we could go for, uh, for example, rights of assembly. Right now, we currently have a lot of radicalism, and most of it's actually not even coming from the discrimination, although we do have that, but for unfulfilled political movements. So maybe we would want to, you know, uh, enable one of these that there's kind of a lot of, uh, you know, agitation for. This is the most agitation I've ever seen for mass conscription, uh, which would be a wild PM to enable because conscription is currently broken uh but we see you know a big one for a council republic a big one for presidential republic these types of things a big one for autocracy i don't think we're gonna go for our autocracy although autocracy i it might even be incompatible yeah it's incompatible so i'm not sure that one might just go away i wish we could go council republic but i don't think we will because everyone will really hate that and so um but we have a parliament now um and i think we're gonna conclude that episode on that note we had victoria die and then the, the vultures started circling. Both France and Germany declared war on us. We defended our sovereign territory, our territorial integrity here in Germany with the British Germany. Um, I mean, uh, German british uh, The German uh, British Isles. This is, the, of course, where they're from. Uh, and so that was a bit of fun. And next episode, we will almost assuredly be rolling a fascist because we will go through and re-roll a ton of generals until we get a fascist and, of course, loud cars outside. And so uh, we will finally get uh, on the event chain next episode. Uh, but alas, we will not have our friends and family to share it with, with the death of Marx and then the death of Victoria. Truly, it is a time for mourning.